Hi everybody. Welcome back to St. Peter's Preschool Time. I'm Mrs. May and this is my friend Coco. Let's start by doing our welcome song, okay? Help me out. Welcome to St. Peter's Time, St. Peter's Time, St. Peter's Time. Welcome to St. Peter's Time. I'm so glad you're here. We're glad they're here today, aren't we, Coco? We're going to talk about something really fun today. It's something that we all have under our skin. Everybody has one and it helps us stand up. It helps us bend. It helps us twist. It helps us do everything. And if we didn't have it, we would fall right to the ground. Does anybody know what that is? It is made up of bones and they are something that sometimes people dress up like one of these trick or treat night. Does anybody have a guess? Do you have a guess, Coco? Yes, Coco, you have one of these too, underneath your fur. Oh, I think I heard somebody say, oh, over here, a skeleton. That's right. We all have a skeleton underneath our skin. I'm gonna build this skeleton. And then we'll talk about the parts of it. Here's a little skeleton right here, right? He has a skull, ribs, hip bones, arm bones, finger bones, leg bones, foot bones, so many kinds of bones. Now friends, I want you to meet a friend of mine and Coco is going to sit over here and I'm gonna bring out this friend of mine and his name is Scully. Can you say hi to Scully? You say hi, Scully. Scully's waving. Is this a real skeleton? No, he's pretend. I have a real skeleton under my skin, but we know that this is pretend because pretend skeletons don't just walk around on their own. They have to have skin and a brain and a way to make them move. So this is a pretend skeleton. Oh, and what do I have right here? Does anybody know that letter? S, that's right, it makes a snake sound. It kind of looks like a snake. Letter S for skeleton and skull and scully. Scully wants to play a game with you to help us learn some parts. It's called Scully Says. It's kind of like the game Simon Says. Now, before we start though, we're gonna talk a little bit about the parts of Scully, just like we did on the board. Here is your skull. Does anybody know why you have a skull? It holds something very, very, very important that's very squishy. And in fact, it helps you think. Do you know what it is? You're right, it's your brain. I wanna show you what's inside your skull. I have a really good picture here. Inside your skull is a brain and your brain helps you think and control other parts of your body. And it's very important to protect your skull because your brain's inside your skull. Do you know why you wear a helmet when you ride your bike or skateboard? Yes, because it protects your skull. That's right, you don't want your skull to crack because then it could hurt your brain. What other people wear special hats to protect their skull? Can you think of any? Construction workers, yes. They don't want any beams falling on their head or pieces of wood, it might crack their skull, so they wear a nice hard hat. Anybody else? A firefighter, that's right. He has to go into burning buildings and sometimes they're falling down on his head and he has to wear a hat to protect his skull. Good job. Now, this part is your rib cage and it looks like a cage. I'll take the letter S off here. And that is your rib cage. And everybody has one of those and guess what your rib cage holds. Something that beats, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, and it pumps the blood from your head to your toes, and it's squishy, and you need something to protect it. Your heart, 
That's right. You can see that little boy has a rib cage, and inside he has his heart and his lungs. Well, you have that too, and Scully is a skeleton, so he doesn't have his heart. These are your hip bones, your leg bones, your feet, your hand bones, and your arm bones. So, when I say, Scully says, touch your skull, I want to see you touch your skull and then knock on it and feel it, okay? Are you ready? Everybody stand up. Okay, stand up. Ready? Scully says, touch your skull. Whoop. Is that your skull? Yep. Can you feel your skull? I hear it. It's hard. God made it very hard to protect your brain. Scully says, touch your ribs. I can feel my ribs if you stretch to one side and go up and down, you can feel all those little bones protecting your heart and your lungs. Good. Scully says, touch your hip bones. Right there are your hip bones. You, that very hard part on either side of your belly button are your hip bones. Scully says, turn around and touch your spine. If you bend over, friends, feel that bumpy thing going up and down your back. That's your spine, and it helps you twist and turn. It's a wonderful thing. How about your leg bone? Scully, touch your leg bone. There's your leg bone. Good. Scully, touch your shoulder bone. Whoop, right up here. Here's your shoulder bone. Friends, you have so many bones, and you can play that game at home and see if you can remember some of the parts of your skeleton. Good job. Now we're going to do our skeleton pattern game. Let's start with an orange skeleton, a purpley pink one, and a green one. These pretend skeletons made a pattern. Our pattern's orange, purple, and green. To repeat that pattern over again, what would be next? That's right, orange. And then shout it out, purple. Good. And then, would it be orange? No. What's next? Green. Good job. Let's do it one more time, repeating it. Orange, purple, green. Orange, purple, green. What's first? Orange. Shout out the next. Purple. Green, look at those fun dancing skeletons. Mrs. May's making them dance. Are they real? No, they're just pretend. Good job, friends. Now we're gonna play a game. And this game is great because your bones need exercise. And they also need healthy foods to eat. Can you think of any healthy foods that are green? Yes, broccoli, lettuce, Beans, all kinds of vegetables are very good for your bones and you want to keep them healthy so they don't crack. Also, drinking your milk and eating cheese and dairy products are great for your bones. Now, I have a fun game that's going to exercise your bones and I need you to stand up. But before I start, I'm going to show you something funny that I want you to act like these when I say the part fall down. Mrs. May is standing and she has black pants on. And as you can see, my pants don't fall down because I have a skeleton under them and my body are in the pants to keep them holding up. But if you had a pair of pants with no skeleton, ooh, what's this? Oh, there's that letter. What? I spy with my beady eye. S for skeleton. Good job. Watch what happens when I drop these pants. Do you think, when I let go, do you think they can stand up by themselves? Or do you think they're just going to fall to the ground? You're right. Ready? Here they go. They fell right to the ground because they have nothing holding them up. And that's what your skeleton does. Your skeleton helps hold you up. Now, we're going to sing a song. I just showed you how those pants fall down. I want you to fall down when I say the words fall down. And the song goes like this. I have a skeleton under my skin. It likes to dance around. If I didn't have a skeleton at all. Whoops. 
I'd fall down. And I want you to fall down when I say that, okay? Now I want you all to stand up. I will sing it, and then I'll say something that the skeleton's doing, and you copy me, okay? Are you ready? I have a skeleton under my skin. It likes to clap around. If I didn't have a skeleton at all, whoops! I'd fall down. Did you fall down when I said it? Did you? Fall down like those pants that have no skeleton. Okay, let's try it again. I have a skeleton under my skin. It likes to march around. If I didn't have a skeleton at all, what would happen? Whoops! I'd fall down. That's right. Maybe you can think of some things your skeleton does. Let's see. Shout some things out. Oh, I heard somebody say skip, hop, yes. Okay, let's try, how about we try the hopping one, ready? I have a skeleton under my skin. It likes to hop around. If I didn't have a skeleton at all, whoops, I'd fall down. Friends, you can play that as much as you want. You can rewind it. You can think of your own things that your skeleton likes to do. That's a fun game and it also gives you exercise for your bones. Now we're gonna play a game. We talked about how skeletons are real underneath our skin, but skeletons don't walk around by themselves. And on trick or treat night, or if you go out and you're walking around your neighborhood and you see some skeletons, we know they're pretend, they're not real. I also have another fun pretend game. I want you to see if you can guess what I'm pretending to be. I like to creep around at night and I like to find mice and I say, meow, meow. What am I pretending to be? A cat, that's right. Am I really a cat? No, I'm Mrs. May, but I can pretend to be a kitty cat. Meow, but I'm really Mrs. May. Okay, let's see what else I can pretend to be. This is a bird that comes out at night Ooh, ooh. Do you know what it is? Ooh, ooh. What am I pretending to be? An owl, that's right. But I'm really not an owl. I'm just pretending to be one. Good job, our little mask helps us pretend and so does our costume. Now what I am I pretending to be? Arr. A pirate, am I really a pirate? Is that real? Pirates are real, but I'm not a pirate. I'm pretending to be a pirate, right? And I use my mask. Friends, when you're out trick-or-treating, you're gonna see lots of masks and people dressed up, and they might look real, but they're just pretending, and you can have fun that way. So when you go out trick-or-treating, be safe and have fun. And what I have for you now is a fun story that is pretend, and I'm hoping that Mrs. Kerper and maybe Mr. Kerper will read it to you. So enjoy, and when it's done, come on back and we'll work on our craft at the Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Kerper here. I am reading you a story today to help out Mrs. May. We are getting ready to celebrate Halloween, where you might see ghosts and witches and spooky goblins roaming up and down your streets or maybe costumes in the store. One of the things that you might wonder about is, is everything real that you see, like on Halloween, or is it make-believe? Like things are make-believe on trick-or-treat night. The story I'm going to read today is called The Little Old Lady Who Wasn't Afraid of Anything. It's illustrated by Megan Lloyd and written by Linda Williams. Once upon a time, there was a little old lady who wasn't afraid of anything. One windy afternoon, the little old lady left her cottage and went for a walk in the forest to collect herbs, spices, nuts, and seeds. 
she walked so long and so far that it started to get dark. There was only a sliver of the moon shining through the night when the little old lady started to walk home. Suddenly she stopped. Right in the middle of the path were two big shoes. And the shoes went plomp, plomp. Get out of my way, you two big shoes. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady. And on she walked down the path. But behind her, she could hear two shoes go plomp. A little further on, the little old lady stumbled into a pair of pants, and the pants went wiggle, wiggle. Get out of my way, you pair of pants. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady, and on she walked. But behind her, she could hear, you can do it with me, you're going to see a pattern. Two shoes that go clomp, clomp. And one pair of pants that went wiggle, wiggle. Further still, the little old lady bumped into a shirt. The little old shirt went shake, shake. Get out of my way, you silly shirt. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady. And on she walked a little bit faster. And behind her, she could hear, do it with me, friends. Two shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt, they went shake, shake. A little ways on, the little old lady came upon two white gloves and a tall black hat. The gloves went clap, clap, and the hat went nod, nod. Get out of my way, you two white gloves. And that tall black hat, I'm not afraid of you. And on she walked, but a little bit faster, because behind her she could hear. I think she heard. Do it with me, friends. Stomp those feet. Two shoes that go clump, clump. One pair of pants that went wiggle, wiggle. One shirt that went shake, shake. Two gloves that went clap, clap and one hat that went nod, nod. By now, that little old lady was walking at a really quiet, fast pace. She was near her cottage when she was startled by a very huge, very scary pumpkin head. And the head went, <laughs> boo, boo. That's my dog, Sophie. This time, the little old lady did not stop to talk. She did not stop at all. She ran. She ran all the way home. But behind her, she could hear two shoes that go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants that go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt that go shake, shake. Two gloves that go clap, clap. And one hat that went nod, nod. There she is. She looks pretty scared. The little old lady did not look back. She ran as fast as she could, and she didn't stop to catch her breath until she was safe inside her cottage with the door locked. It was so quiet in her cottage. Then she heard the knock, knock on the door. Should she answer it? Well, she was not afraid of anything, so she went to the door and opened it. What do you think that she saw? She saw two shoes that go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants that go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt that go shake, shake. Two gloves that go clap, clap. One hat that went nod, nod. And one scary pumpkin head that went boo, boo. I'm not afraid of you, she said bravely. What do you want anyway? We've come to scare you. You can't scare me, said the little old lady. 
then what's to become of us? The pumpkin head, her head suddenly looked very unhappy. There they are at her door. I have an idea, the little old lady said, as she whispered into the pumpkin's ear. The pumpkin her head nodded and his face seemed to brighten. The little old lady said goodnight, closed the door, and whistled on her way to bed. What do you think we're going to do? Now the pumpkin head looks a little bit happier. The next morning, she woke up early. She went to her window and looked out into her garden. And what do you think she saw? She saw two shoes that go plump, plump. One pair of pants that went wiggle, wiggle. One hat that goes shake, shake. Two gloves that went clack, clack. One hat that went nod, nod. And a very scary pumpkin head go boo, boo. And she scared all the crows away. I hope that you all have a very nice Halloween. You might choose to do something with your family. Maybe some of you will go to a few friends' houses and go trick-or-treat. But whatever it might be, please stay safe, and we hope to see you soon. Now we're going to make our craft. And I thought it'd be fun to make a skeleton. And you can make yours any way you want. You might need a grown-up to help you for a few of these steps, like maybe cutting out a shape for the skull. It can be a circle, an oval, whatever you want, and you could make two eyes on it with a marker and a nose and a smiley face. Now, I have some Elmer's glue, whatever kind of liquid glue. You have to think about how you want your skeleton to look. I'm gonna make his spine first. That's the part that helps us bend. And I thought I'd use a big Q-tip to put right on top of there. Now, I'm going to make him look like he's doing a jumping jack. So I'm going to make his arms, and a grown-up can help you put this glue on because this can be a little tricky. But you can make your skeleton look like he's waving or anything. You can ask a grown-up to cut these Q-tips in half because they're a little tricky. They kind of fly around when you cut them in half. So just lay them in the glue after you tell your grown-up how you want them to look. And then of course we need some legs, leg bones. I think I'll have him look like he's jumping. And you can tell your grown-up, you could even stand there and say, I want my skeleton to look like this. And you can stand a certain way and maybe your grown-up can make the glue lines for you to stick your Q-tips on that are that you're pretending to be bones. Now I have some really little ones for feet and of course you have many little bones in your feet but we'll just put these on here. We can't get all the bones on. If you have a crayon or a white pencil you can draw the rib cage and just put some lines maybe out from either side of the spine. And if you want to draw the hip bones, they would be under the ribs, and you could just make two circles, on one on either side. And if you want to draw some finger bones, you could put five on there and some toes. And there you have it. You have your very own fun skeleton. And you could decide again if you want his arms to go straight out or you want to make him look like he's squatting down or one arm up or one arm down. It doesn't matter. I hope you have fun making your skeleton. Friends, our time is over. And I thought that we would sing our goodbye song, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time, okay? Oh, sure, Coco, Coco, come on over. Oh, oh my goodness, who is that?
Chris. I hear Coco, but Coco, is that you under that costume? What are you dressed up like? I see, you're a skeleton. Wow, are you really a skeleton? Do you have a real skeleton under your fur? Yes, but you have a costume on and you're pretending. Let's lift up your little mask. Oh, it's just Coco. He was pretending to be a skeleton. I really like that costume. Well, can you help us say goodbye? Ready? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. We'll see you next time. Show him a kiss, Coco. Mwah! Happy trick-or-treat!